betting uh, the not so much uh, anymore is more down to my own fault. Uh, I need to uh, I need to get studying again to to get the edge back. But yeah, it's a great product. I love the exchange. It's uh, it's really it's uh, in my opinion one of the better bookmakers, if not the best bookmaker out there. Are we on to race number six over 1,400 meters? It's a Phillies and Mares handicap and uh, your last chance to play a pick three. You need to get your bets on by 15.20. And this race uh, at the top, I'm going to say, if you can include the field in your pick six, just want to sit back, relax, and with no pressure if you're running in the exotics. This is the race that I think you can uh, consider including the pick six. But if you manage to narrow it down, then you've done very well because this looks to be very tough. Two second not third at 11 to 2, four Konabi at 33 to 10, five Hatta at 9 to 2, six perfect appeal as an 8 to 1 shot, eight bright star 7 to 1, 8 to 1 number 11, Meredith Gray, and uh, the balance are all in double figures. Personally, I think whatever beats Konabi will win. Uh, she's the filly that and she was beaten by Shaken not stirred last time out, but I think this time round there will be a form reversal. And if you're playing to beat Konabi, now that's where it becomes tricky. 100% right. Last time at number four, Konabi, I made one of my value bets. I opened up 12 to 1, shortened right down to 11 to 2. And I did the show on that occasion with the Vaughn, and we both agreed shaken, not stirred was the danger. So we said, let's take some exactors and swingers. And I think the exactor paid around about 180 rand. Konabi was very unlucky. Had to make up a lot of ground, was really eating into the lead. But testament to shaken, not stirred's courage, managed to hold on. Wendy Whitehead for Ian Howard and the entire team. Another runner on the day. Another runner on the day. So maybe <laughs> Wendy Whitehead, another four or five on the day. It looks that way because we've been touching on all the runners thus far in the previous races and we've given them all chances. They're all in with lively chances. They're in the money. They're in the betting. And who knows, they could all end up in the winner's enclosure. So we've got to play some Yankees, some trebles and some all to comes <laughs> Because if they come in, they're going to come in a big way. Yeah, if you are a Whitehead follower, you are a clean up the other day. Okay, now the guy said we heard it about Kurnabi. What about the balance of the fields? Which horses can we include if we want to try and beat Kurnabi? Number 10, Blusher Dawn, I mentioned earlier on at around 14 to 1. If you look at her highest rating achieved, she was a 90. She's now racing off a 63. They've dropped her down her last few runs from a 69 down to a 63. And if you go back earlier in the runs, behind some fair opposition, and I just feel this is a horse who's going to be doing her best work late on. She loves the poly. All four of her wins have come on the poly. Serena Mudley knows her exceptionally well. I'm not quite sure what happened last time out from a wide draw. Never seemed to get into it over 1,100. So at 14 to 1, number 10, Blush of Dawn for me. I think she's a horse you've got to throw into the play. After that, number three, give me a lullaby, 10 to 1. And like you mentioned, you go the field, number nine, not now, Pussycat at 20 to 1. That could be another horse who could cause a big upset. Yeah, that's going to be my value in the race. You know, every now and again, I would, let me start that again. We often try to stay the case for our horses, whether it's form or what we saw in replays or what appeals to us in black and white. Maybe on the day it looks as well, but every now and again, I don't know if Sheldon, I'm sure he has it, all punters have, there's a horse that just jumps off the page and, you know, it's not about form, it's not about what you see or what you remember, you just get that feeling for a horse and this is the horse that gives me the feeling on the day. It often happens, something jumps out of sure. the page or you're driving and something jumps into the road <laughs> or something and it catches your attention. And number nine, not now, Pussycat. I was also quick to mention the 20 to 1 could be an upset. You've obviously found something about her. So number nine, not now, Pussycat. Cabela Mazzignana, this one is a four-time winner, absolutely loves the poly. And we could be on to some nice exactors and swingers here if we get horses like Not Now Pussycat, Blush of Dawn, and even one or two others. So certainly the value's there. Yeah, I think 55 and a half kg, 1,600 meters. Uh, she's stayed before, 1,400 meters, not at her optimum, but the fact is she loves the poly track. 
And although she's poorly drawn, well, we're hoping that nine, nine not now, Pussycat could be one to boost all bets. Whether it's trifectas, quarters, two wins, well, that is a massive plus. But Konabi is the horse to beat. If you're playing it wide, Sheldon has found three and ten. I like numbers nine and five as the cover. All the best, yeah. Race number six. It's Donovan Everture from Cape Racing and uh, I'd just like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with uh, Intrabet and Cape Readers in this, uh, in this golf day today here at Pearl Valley. Um, it's fantastic for the industry to see all the relevant stakeholders coming down and having a good time and networking and it's exactly what the, the industry needs right now in terms of moving forward and recreating some positivity to take us forward into the next year. Thank you.